The virtues of the Templeton Foundation are humility before the limitless wonder of God, expanding the vision of ultimate reality, open-minded inquiry, entrepreneurship of the spirit, and the discipline and adventure of sincere questioning. My father foresaw a day when new information from research on spiritual realities might truly reduce conflict between all religions. He felt that from such research, people would come to acknowledge a rich diversity of spiritual information, which is for some universally accessible or in time could be and may well become those who asked a question on a given day, accessible then to all people. Thus, in this way, it is hoped that all religions will embrace both Sir John's larger spiritual vision and his shaping of our foundation's motto, how little we know, how eager to learn. Therefore, in reflection on President Halleck's remarkable life's work, I would like to offer for all of us some quite notable contributions on how he shares my father's vision for spiritual progress. First, he has rigorously pursued intellectual investigations of mind and spirit. Professor Halleck asks questions relentlessly and does not seek only simple answers. He has worked tirelessly to explore innovative ways to think about and convey timeless truths to others so that people of all spiritual and cultural traditions, even atheists, may find new and deeper ways to express them. Everyone in the world is a potential nominator for the Templeton Prize. I sometimes think that people do not believe me when I say this, but it's true. This is because the very qualities recognized by the prize are wide and also multi-dimensional concerns or roles and thus are deeply relevant to every human being in the world. Down here, if you look very carefully, we have a hammer and a sickle. The hammer and the sickle are both broken. And, and here we have a chain which is also broken. And here at the bottom we have the symbol of the Templeton Foundation, which is the tree of life. A tree might have roots that would add to solidity and would depend on others, but the great thing about trees or lights are those that keep reaching up and up, which he would see immediately are the things that you've been doing in life when things were not so free, and now that you are much more free, what you are doing to bless so many others. So I would like to put this on. Globally speaking, the phenomenon of religion is not dying, but being transformed. Not only are new religions and religious movements being created, but the old religions are being transformed and assuming new political and cultural roles. Statements such as Britain is a Christian country or Europe is a Christian continent are bound to provoke the question, what do you mean by them? And what conclusions do you draw from them? What form of Christianity 
could help our world to be a better place for the lives of all, both Christians and non-Christians, both believers and atheists. Today, not only the countries of Central and Eastern Europe are watching with great concern the attempts of the Kremlin rulers to resurrect the old empire. The ideology of scientific atheism died a long time ago in Russia. But old-style Russian nationalism and imperialism dreams are still very much alive. If the danger and temptation of national selfishness and isolationism were to triumph in Europe, leading to the tragic collapse of the European Union, the nation states of Europe would not acquire greater sovereignty, but instead would be exposed far more to the forces of chaos and destruction from within. A certain model of multiculturalism based on principle of toleration resulted not in a community of citizens, of neighbors, but in a conglomeration of ghettos. Let everyone live as they like, so long as they don't disturb and restrict others. That sort of tolerance is fine for people living alongside each other, but not people living together 